Good day, everyone. I'm Travis Giffen. I'm the Assistant Director of Online Programs here at the College of Education at the University of Illinois, Champaign-Urbana. I want to thank you all for joining us today for our alumni panel um, with the wonderful uh, guests that we have this evening. I know folks might be still logging in and, and signing in as time goes on. I want to thank everybody for joining us so far. Um, just as a quick reminder for the, the rundown for this evening, um, I'm going to turn things over and let each of our uh, panelists in briefly introduce themselves. And then we're going to start with some panel questions about the student experience and their experiences as students. And then we're going to open up for Q&A from the audience for questions related to programs or their um, student experience. If you have questions about other programs, um, we do have um, Myself, uh, Rihanna, and Sangeetha are also here from online programs, so we might be able to help answer some of those other questions. Um, and then I'll also post an email address um, that you can reach out to us um, if you have uh, follow-up questions also. Um, after the questions about and panel time about uh, student experience and programs, uh, we're gonna do some questions about each of their careers and let each of our panelists respond and share a bit about what it is that they do and what it is that they're doing. And then open up for questions for the audience uh, to questions about uh, what it is that each of our wonderful panelists do. So with that said, um, I'm gonna stop talking for a bit and I'm going to introduce Dr. Uh, Valerie Jones and give her a moment to share a bit about herself. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us uh, this afternoon slash evening. Um, my name is Valerie Jones, and I have the privilege to serve as the president for Lone Star College SciFair. So I'm down in the Houston area, and I started this position in June of this year, um, and I had the privilege to participate in the doctoral hooding ceremony for uh, my doctorate in EPOL, Diversity and Equity. I believe in the summer of 21, I completed, so I was able to participate in the hooding ceremony that December. So thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. And I will go ahead and, and have uh, Dr. Juliana Sandry uh, introduce herself. Travis, it is a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation. My name is Juliana Sandry. I work for the Brazilian government. So I'm here in Brazil. It's evening now. Uh, good afternoon and for everyone. I am a lawyer. I have a master's degree. in public administration and I have just I was also a Lehman Fellow during my my doctoral uh, studies and as I work I work for the Brazilian government so I'm the head of conduct supervision of the Central Bank of Brazil that is the uh, monetary authority and the supervisor of the financial review. Thank you and Dr. Kenneth Jones, if you go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay, thank you, Travis. Uh, good evening, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here. And uh, just a little bit about myself. Right now, I am an educational consultant. I go around to schools. I work with parents. I work with companies uh, talking about actually my research. And my research was in how to use video games to implement and motivate and enhance students in learning. So I'm very excited about doing that. On top of that, I am also a game designer. I'm actually in the midst of uh, finished writing a narrative for an upcoming video game that uh, just got the official approval from the United States Copyright Office to put into production. So everybody cross their fingers and hopefully it goes well. So I, I got so many different things uh, going on, but it is a pleasure to be here at tonight and to meet everyone. Thank you all for the brief introductions. And um, also everybody in the chat, feel free to introduce yourselves. You can let us know if you're a current student or a prospective student, uh, maybe where you're located to get um, folks talking. Um, I'm gonna start with some questions and then um, we will open up for Q and A. Um, when we get to Q and A, you can either type your questions in the chat um, and I can ask them for you or if you'd um, raise your hand with their reaction. Uh, function here in Zoom uh, that I can call on you um, when we get to the question time. So with that said, 
we'll start and uh, keep things kind of in the, the same order um, that uh, introduced each of you uh, for this evening. But could you share a little bit about what you were doing before you started your program? We'll start with uh, Dr. Valerie Jones. Certainly. So I had worked in the community college system in North Carolina for about 15 years and uh, took a move for vice president of instruction position out to Odessa College. Um, and those of you who are not familiar with the Permian Basin or Friday Night Lights, the movie about the, the football in the Permian Basin is yes in Odessa. Um, that's really all there is out there. So there's literally a two and a half hour radius of desert that surrounds these two oil and gas towns. Um, so I was the, the vice president of instruction at that college doing fantastic work um, there and really making tremendous progress toward eliminating inequities and outcomes for our students in the midst of this really challenging ecosystem, um, which is relevant because one of those initiatives was we migrated the entire college to eight week terms. And so we had historically for 70 years been on a traditional uh, 16 week semester and we made a migration for the entire institution to prioritize um, and offer predominantly eight week courses. And so for me, as I started this uh, exploration into graduate school, I had years of data from my own students who are working adults about how successful that was. And so that was a that was a, a necessary thing for me in my initial exploration that I'll, I'll talk more about later. But I had the privilege to, to serve the students in that area as their VPI. Thank you. Juliana, if you go next. I was already working for the Central Bank of Brazil, but I was in a different position. I was the head of training, head of our corporate university for almost eight years. So I, I were responsible for all the training, all the development of technical skills of our staff in nine different cities and leadership skills and abilities and I was also head of the Brazilian Training Center with the IMF. The IMF has a regional training center for central banks and for the financial system. It was it is located in Brasilia, Brazil, and I was the head of it. So everything related to knowledge management and development and leadership and technical skills, really training, I was responsible for for the strategies and for implementing it. Thank you. And Ken, if you'd let us know about what you were doing before you started the program. Okay, thank you, Travis. Uh, before I started the program, I was a special education and a general education teacher. So when I started out as a special education teacher, uh, my primary objective was to help students who were performing anywhere from two to four years below the grade point average to try to bring them up to average and up to their grade level. And I was successful at actually moving nine students from special education to general education. And I actually received an accommodation from the Indiana State Board of Education. So I was very proud about that. I worked as and as a general education teacher. I worked as I worked in narrative writing and primarily in African American history. And with that, I was able to uh, introduce a lot of topics in relation to ancient African history. But also, I also served as helping students with counseling and getting them to going to colleges and universities. Uh, but the school that I worked at, uh, many of the students there were suffering from, you know. Uh, it was a local forming school, was suffering from you know, low grades, bad attendance. So I was able to come in there and institute a program and work with curriculum designers. And when I left, which was only a couple of years ago, uh, we went from having a proficiency rate of students graduating at 30% to 62%. So I am just extremely proud about that. As you certainly should be. So. Thank you all for the 
great uh, responses and giving us a little insight to what you were doing uh, before you started the program. Can you let us all know, you know, which uh, program that it was, or concentration rather, specifically um, also, that it was that you selected and why did you choose that program? So for me, uh, I pursued and completed the education policy and organizational leadership with the concentration in diversity and equity because it was the longest possible degree title I could find. <laughs> uh, no, it, uh, so for me, I, I was already in a higher education leadership position, and I, I, unlike some of my colleagues who I think in diapers said, I want to be a college president. Um, I had been faculty, I had worked in administration, I knew what the unglamorous parts of the job were, so I was in no rush to get to that stage, and I really enjoyed working with the faculty and students as I did at that level. Um, but the, the trend in higher education is very much toward the requirement, not just preference, but the requirement of a doctorate for higher education, whether it's faculty, dean, vice president, or president, um, really becoming an expectation for that, that doctorate. And so I had, had done tremendous work. We'd been nationally recognized through achieving the dream for our student success and equity um, and eliminating racial inequity disparities in our students' performance. Um, we were in the top five community colleges in the nation for a number of years. And I really recognized that I would be pissed if I was ineligible for a job because I didn't have that doctorate at that time. And so that was my, my, a piece of my catalyst, right? And I think that's an important thing to acknowledge that, that that is a key that is necessary in higher education employment for a lot of different opportunities. But for me then, I knew that committing years of my life, in addition to working full-time at a very demanding position, um, it better be something I was passionate about and it better be in a place in an institution with faculty that I felt like were themselves inspirational, were themselves able to be contributors and, and bring um, a lot to the field of both higher education and education, and most specifically the world of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so I found that in the University of Illinois program. Um, and then structurally, as I had uh, mentioned before, for me, it was a, a deal breaker that it had to be an eight week term program. Um, it, I had to have the classes in eight weeks because I knew I could do one class at a time and just keep going and never stop. And that for me, that would be feasible with my work schedule. And so that was a, a really, really valuable structural part of the, the program opportunity. And it, it had to be online. Um, so I wanted it to be done online well. Like I said, I was in a two and a half hour radius. It was, there was not a choice of a, of a local place um, to even consider so then I, I wanted, it was very important to me that the faculty who were going to be teaching these online classes wanted to be teaching in that environment. And I found that consistently in my experience as well. Thank you. Juliana? that I had, I was the president of the graduate council and I didn't have a doctoral degree. So, and I sent many, many uh, professionals to go abroad to have their doctoral, their terminal degrees and I didn't have mine. So I, I missed that part. At the same time, I have been, uh, my whole career were in human resources development not only at the, the Brazilian federal government, but before for the financial system for, for international bank. I, I, I think we may have, have lost you for a bit, just checking. Can somebody let me know if the audio cut out for them also, or if it was supposed to be? I think Juliana's um, audio is cutting in and out. And yeah, I, I hear and see you perfectly. Okay. Um, maybe try turning off your video. That might at least cut down on the, the bandwidth for you enough.
Are you still there? Can you now? Hear me? I can hear you. The audio is cutting in and out still. Do you want to try just talking without your camera on? Let's try to do that. Sorry. Yeah. There no, is no a problem. terrible storm here. The, the, the Wi-Fi is very unstable, the internet. So I, I'm sorry, I, I just go, try to go quickly. So I had the practice. I had 15 years of practice, but I didn't have the major, the theory about it. So that's why I have decided to go through a program where practice were available. So I have these 15 years and I found at the University of Illinois, a program where my practice was available and where I would be surrounded by people where practice were available, not only for the theory, but they could give me different perspectives and to assure or not what I was doing. So this was one point, the, the, main, the most important for me at the time, the practice was important and it had to be flexible because I was, I am in Brazil and I did, and I wanted, I was a full-time professional. So I had to do both at the same time but not any online program. It has to be a high quality, a certified, a recognized program. So that was the most, the, the three points that was important for me. First, uh, practice was, were valuable, not only the theory, and it was flexible and it was with high quality, what enabled me to make this connection between what I was doing and what I was, I wanted to learn. Thank you so much for sharing. That worked much better, I think, uh, sound-wise. So thank you so much. Ken, now your turn. Okay, yes. So uh, for me, I selected learning design leadership. And uh, it was EPOL, I'm sorry, with a concentration in learning design leadership. When I was a special education teacher, what I saw on a day in and day out basis was that students were not motivated to learn. They would come to school only because they it was a requirement. Um, one of the turning points for me came one day when I was in my classroom and one of my students came in and he asked if he could sit with me during lunch. And I said, sure. So he asked me that I know anything about computer programming. And I said, not much, but very little. Um, and then he became frustrated and he had his cell phone in his hand. He slammed the cell phone down and he said, oh, what's the use? Because nobody cares about us black kids. He said, you don't care, nobody else cares. And that really hit me. And that really struck me so bad that I went home and I said, what I am doing right now, I am not helping the, my students the way I thought I would. I, be, I got into education because I thought I could make a difference and I thought I could do things. And I did make a difference, but I didn't feel like my impact was enough. What I saw was that, and talking from many other teachers, students were just doing things from talking to playing games. And that's when it then hit me to, I wanted to learn more of how to use educational content and technology. How could we fuse this together to create a learning environment that would motivate and enhance students to learn? And so when I started to look at programs, I this is my concentration and what I wanted to learn. How could I, how could we do something to then motivate students to want to learn? and encouraged them to want to go to school. Um, we, at the school I was at, we had an attendance rate that sometimes would average between 10 to 20% per week. And students just did not want to come to school. And then one of my other students, uh, which was very profound in what she said to me, she said, uh, and at the time, Mr. Jones, all teachers are, are just high price babysitters. You're not really here because you really care because you really here to teach. 
And so for me, that was the catalyst to then that very same day, I went home and I started looking at uh, doctoral programs. I had just finished up my master's from the University of Kansas in education administration and policy studies. And I was going to go, and I was actually in line for a principal to apply for a couple of roles as assistant principal when I then stopped and I said, you know what, I want to learn more about how can we redesign educate, redesign how the way we learn and to motivate these kids to then want to not only be encouraged to want to learn and be inspired to want to learn, and they would take learning to a much higher level. So I got into learning design leadership to learn more about how can, what could we do from the didactic pedagogy of that what we have been used to, to something different. And so that is where I'm at right now. This is my life's work right now. This is my life's passion of how to design almost entertainment and learning. And I'm actually working with uh, a couple of great people right now at the University of Pittsburgh, also at the Illinois, of how to design programs. And one at the game that I have written is an educational based game, but it's with the same engagement and entertainment as you would see in some of the most popular video games. Because through my research, I found out that uh, all people, but especially kids from pre-K through 12th grade, are highly engaged into games. So this is my passion for uh, my research and one of my, and it was the, really the basis of why I chose learning design leadership at the University of Illinois. I looked up great programs and I'm a, I don't want to take too long. And I actually was going to go to Vanderbilt. I had actually got accepted at Vanderbilt two days before. And I said, you know what? But I felt something in my heart and my soul that Illinois would be home. And so I, I said, I wanted to go. And I, one thing that hit me is that I, I wanted to learn from the best. Not that Vanderbilt was not, because it is an excellent program, but something about Illinois to me rang home. And it has been one of the, the most uh, great experiences I've ever had in my life and so happy for it. So that's kind of, you know, I could go on and talk for hours, you all, but I'm going to stop. Thank you so much for sharing. And well, I'd like to say that uh, you made the right choice and U of I is number one. So. Uh, no offense to Vanderbilt, but we are the best. You're right, Chad. Uh, so the next question I have is, uh, what advice would each of you give to uh, future and current students um, if they are considering the program or just uh, you know getting started in the program? So my my first advice would be get started and stick with it. Um, that sounds really straightforward, right? So let me give a little bit of context. <laughs> Because I started in the desert, I moved to the Houston area for a different position at my at uh, Lone Star College. Completely different context, working with seven different community colleges within this system, serving ninety thousand students and trying to work with seven VPIs. Um, so sticking with it for a move, buying a house, everything that goes goes within that. I thought I was like, "Whoo, that's a big challenge! Yay me!" Little did I know in 2020, COVID would hit and would make all of that look so easy. And I was like, okay, that's all right. We, we can just do my whole life online, both the doctoral program and my job, and I'll migrate 5,000 sections of classes that were face-to-face -face on. This will be fine. This will be like burning house image, right? This is fine. And we're, we're moving through that. It's been about a year. We get to February um, of 20. One, I guess the years have all run together somewhere in that window of time when we're still in this COVID flux of partially online, partially present, lots of chaos and mayhem still. Um, if you remember, I said I was in Houston. And so Texas had a full week of a devastating freeze in which over 400 people died. So we're not prepared for the storms that some of you in colder places are. And so it completely, uh, it almost completely wiped out our entire power grid. And so now we had that on top of all of this. And so when I say start now, um, it won't get easier. Whatever your life is, hopefully it's not COVID and freezes uh, in, in your future, but start now and then do your best to stick with it at whatever pace is possible. But I put an asterisk at the end of that. 
Um, I had some wonderful classmates who had to delay their program for all kinds of different life reasons. So I put the asterisks on that to say, also give yourself grace because sometimes there are things in your lives, whether it's parents that you care for or kids or spouses or losses that will require an unexpected pause. Um, so give yourself grace because it'll make it easier for you to return back when you are able again. Um, so start now and stick with it is my first. But I would also say, um, especially if you're in the online environment, really make a point to connect with your faculty and your classmates. Um, I love that we have Brazil represented here because that's what I experienced in every single class. We had students from China and Taiwan and um, Ecuador and you know, every continent had representation in different classes. And especially for me in the diversity and equity program, that was invaluable. And so you definitely have the ability to develop those relationships with your faculty and with your classmates, similar to that that you do in the face-to-face -face environment. You just have to, do, you have to choose to make those connections. Uh, but it really was a wonderful part is being able to have those more casual conversations with colleagues uh, in the class and learn from their different work experiences as well. So make connections and, and jump on in and get started. Thank you. Juliana? Okay, so I will close the video so it works. I'm here. Everything sounds um, good. I would say choose a program that you like, something that you feel this connection. I think similar to Valerie, what Valerie said, uh, you definitely are going to face challenges. Uh, not if it's the time zone, if it is to have to balance work, family, social life, studies. And for myself, when I began, I just began the program, I switched positions at Central Bank. So my, my entire uh, connection, I entered the program to do HRD and to study that and to have the practice and suddenly I had to change. So for a moment, I, I, I thought I, I was lost because I was studying something that I was not doing anymore, but I was studying something that I really liked. So it helped me. It helped me to go through the changes it helped me to face the different time zones. I had four hours of time zones sometimes. So I had many, many, many classes during the night, 11 at night until one in the morning. And, but studying something that I really cared about, what I believed, what I liked to study, helped me to go through everything. We had a pandemic. I was in a different country. So, but again, sorry to, to enforce that, but studying something that I really wanted to, it helped me to go through all the changes and to be flexible, it's important because we are going to face a lot of changes and you are, it, it, everything you intend to do is not, for sure, is not going to be exactly what you think is going to be not necessarily is going to be worse, but you, you need to adjust. And the program will give you that flexibility. The professors, everybody is going to help you. So be resilient, as Valerie said. Stay, choose a program that you would like to complete no matter what. Thank you for sharing. Okay, uh, and just to kind of piggyback a little bit off of Valerie and Juliana, um, you definitely want to start with, and for me, look inside your heart, look inside your soul and ask yourself, what is it that I truly want to do? Uh, for me personally, and this is just me personally, I started with prayer, and this is just me to say for my answers to what 
for me to how to guide me. And this is how the way I've always lived my life. And once you do that, you really then want to jump right in and start looking at doing the research and start looking at all the other components to the work that it is that you want to do. Another critical point, and I'll come back to this, but another critical point I want to talk about too is that whatever program you're in, whatever research you want to delve into, make sure as much as possible, try to get that kind of community involvement, meaning people that will support you, people that will be there for you to talk, have someone there as you're writing your papers, someone that you can exchange, go back and forth with. Uh, but one of the biggest things for me is to have an advisor who is kind of along the same lines of what your research is about. Um, I was, I had the blessing of having a couple of advisors, and they were actually served on my committee, who were experts in what my research was about. And it really makes a big difference because when your advisor, you can see eye to eye with them on what it is that you're doing, that will help you through the hard days. That will help you through the days when, you know, you're not, you know, at your best. And there are going to be those days. So also, too, it is important to have a support network. Because when you guys, as you are going through and progressing through the program, and then as you are getting towards the latter part, you're going to feel like you're on an island. You're going to feel like, you know, I'm, I'm just the only one here. And where's my support? And that's where it is important to have people in your circle, in your group, who will be there to kind of talk you through, to be there to kind of help you and support you. And it's not just, um, you know, at the university, not your faculty and, and your peers, also family too, huge, very huge. Uh, one of the things I actually put in my dissertation that I wouldn't have complete, I wouldn't have been where I'm at if it had not been the love and support of my family. So you really want to establish that base as you are going through this process. And then ultimately, uh, again, as Valerie and Juliana said, it is then, you know, on you where you then have to say each and every single day, this is my purpose, this is why I'm here, this is what I want to do, because there are going to be some days that, you know, it, it's going to be tough. And I, I was talking to several of uh, uh, people I went through the program with, and they said there were some days they could not even want to write. There were some days they were just so tired of uh, reading, but we we leaned on each other and we helped each other, we supported each other. Sometimes we would meet up in online chats and we would just sit there and write for two or three hours, us together, because sometimes it's hard to write alone. So we would get together as a group and even though we were working our own work, but we would just sit there uh, on Zoom and just write. And sometimes we would cry jokes, say different things, it really helped. So as you all are going through this uh, program again, for me, it's that really look inside your heart and soul and make sure that you are doing the program what it is that you truly want to do. Thank you all for answering that question and the other questions. Now uh, we're going to move into kind of Q&A portion from the audience about uh, what it was like for each of you uh, during your time in, in your programs. Um, so I'll give folks uh, a little bit of time here. Uh, you can either um, enter questions into the chat um, and I am happy to read them off for you, um, or you can uh, raise your hand using the reaction icon um, and we can uh, have you ask your question directly. Yes, go ahead. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Or good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, I'm currently in the program, and I just wanted to hear your experience um, a little bit more about towards the end, or like I have a few more classes to go, and then it's like dissertation world, and I'm kind of like, maybe I'll take an extra class. Like, I just need to hear, you guys got it. I know that it's possible, but you guys can just tell me the story and call me off the ledge, I'd appreciate it. It will be okay. You got this. You totally got this. 
Um, it's a really different space, but I, I wouldn't skip the experience in exchange for classes for sure. Um, because it puts you in the position of the researcher and the author of work uh, for most of us for the first time, right? And so to, to be on the inside of all of those bajillions of articles that you've already read and you realize, okay, yeah, the, the people whom I'm reading are doing this thing that I'm now doing for the first time um, is a really valuable learning experience. I have a, a vivid memory of sitting in an 18 foot RV during COVID processing the data on my little hotspot at the RV park, <laughs> processing data for my dissertation. I was like, I don't think this is what they normally depict doctoral students doing. Um, but it, there was a moment when it clicked and I was like, oh, this is how it's supposed to go or this is how it's supposed to feel. So being able to really push through those new experiences that come with the dissertation. Um, I felt like I learned a lot. I don't ever want to write another dissertation, but I wouldn't do it differently. So you can totally do this. Know that as you step into that unfamiliar territory, you're there with the rest of us who are absolutely equally uh, terrified and uncertain. None of us had a clue but we really figure it out together. And I think just like Ken said, being able to connect with those colleagues and say, are you terrified? Yeah, I'm terrified, but yeah, we can do this, right? Cause it's much easier for us to cheer each other on than it is to self cheer. Um, but yeah, you totally have this. You totally have this. Um, I had to change to uh, when I ent have ent let me say that when I entered the program, I was thinking I was sure I was doing something. And then I had to completely change. It changed my career, it changed everything. So I was really lost because I didn't have a clue to what to write about. I was sure I had zillion things to do, but I had to find my way and suddenly in a, in a class that I, I was taking, I read one single article and had the click, like El Valerie said, that maybe this is a path. So talking to a professor and advisors help, should I go this? And, and it didn't finish as I thought it would be when I had the click, but all this back and forth and having help, that's why I said, the, the professors are there, the faculty are there, and the, your colleagues are there to help you. Everybody wants to succeed. So share this, your doubts, share the, the possible paths. It helped me a lot, and I had a, a lot of, experience at work, but I was a completely novice in being a, a doctoral student. So don't be shy. As Valerie said, everybody's in the same situation. No matter if you, you have a lot of experience at work, there you are a student, a doctoral student, trying to find your way. So uh, share, ask. Go, go for the workshops, talk to people, and everybody wants to, to, to succeed. Yes, I agree. So, uh, Ms. Dada, is that is that how you pronounce your name? Okay. Uh, just as Valerie Juliana said, you definitely have this. All of you all, you have this. All of you all are going to be doctors. It's, it's a done deal. You have this. Um, going back again, when those days come, lean on your support. Lean on those people that are there for you the most. One of the great things that I loved about the faculty at the University of Illinois, they are so supportive. And I'm not just saying that. Just to say it, I mean that. Uh, my advisor, I would contact her early that day 
And she would respond back to me that very same day. What do you need? What do you have? What is it that I can help you with? So definitely understand that if ever you run into that spot of thinking that, okay, uh, wow, if you feel a little bit overwhelmed, lean on that support system and say, hey, uh, you know, I just need this or, or can I make it? And, and they are excellent. And I mean, totally excellent at really supporting you and helping you through because we've all been through it. And so when having such a great faculty who's been through uh, those times, they completely understand what's happening. Uh, there was just a quick story. There was a, a, a lady who, uh, when we were going through our dissertation sequence, we would meet. She was, as she was about to do her dissertation, she was eight months pregnant and she was experiencing some health problems. And she had thought about quitting the program. And immediately, uh, my advice is she said, okay, you know, they went out to set, start talking. You're going to complete this. You're going to get through this. I am going to do everything in my power to make sure that you are, that you will complete and you will be finished. Long story short, she will be getting hooded in December, in a couple of weeks from now. And this is the support system that is going to always be there for you. But, and as Juliana said, and as Valerie said, you make sure, you know, reach out, Ms. Dada, reach out, and you will have the support behind you that will pull you through. So you're, you say you had a couple more classes, and then you're going to go through the dissertation sequence. It's already taken care of. You already have this. It, and, and, and I'm going to speak, and just for me, I'm going to speak that prayer to you. You have this. It's, it's, it's done. It's complete, all of you all. So just keep that in mind. And again, as I posted earlier, anyone who needs to reach out and things, you're going to get through this. And everybody, you're all going to be doctors here very soon. Thank you all for the responses there. Um, we did have one question. Um, that got in the chat. I didn't, um, didn't know if you could clarify that question a little bit. We had a, would you say if the program is more faculty led or student led? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you everyone for having uh, this info session tonight. I'm Nathaniel Smith I'm from New York and very interested in this program, the EPO DE concentration. Um, I work in higher ed. And um, I'm very interested in this program and I'm uh, grateful for all the alumni speaking about the experience. I'm applying to several schools as um, Dr. Kenneth Jones had mentioned earlier, he applied to Vanderbilt, et cetera. And some of the schools, um, they, some of the schools are geared towards the students really supporting the faculty in their research as opposed to uh, a program that I'm looking for where it's really a student-led experience and the faculty are supporting what the student is more or less interested in. And I understand that, you know, we can have an idea coming in and things are gonna change based off of, you know, experiences in the classes, experience with, you know, your cohort and the peers and stuff. So I'm just really interested in um, and hearing more about, because this is a research one university, and the focus is on research, but particularly this program, like, like where is it leaning? Is the student supporting the faculty in their research and then coming out with a dissertation based off of the faculty interest, or is it really student-led and the faculty supporting the student throughout and the student really contributing to the field in the end? Thank so you for that I, clarification. Sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Sorry, Travis. You go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, thank you for the clarification. Um, I can, um, why don't I let our speakers uh, answer and if there's net, if necessary, I will um, add to that. So I'm, I'm certainly happy to share on that. Um, and Nathaniel, please don't hesitate to reach out, especially since you're in higher education or looking at the EPOL uh, diversity and equity program. I'm happy to have offline conversations with you as well. Um, I would say without hesitation that not just for my experience in the program, but that of my colleagues who had different dissertation chair leads, um, that our research is ours. 
Um, we are, we have the fortune of having an advisor who is most closely aligned with our concentration so that they're able to be an expert in that field, but we're not delivered um, like an element of their larger research to do as our dissertation work. Uh, to give an example of how, how much it is our own choosing of what we do to ourselves <laughs> is really how that ends up playing out sometimes. Uh, when I started, I, I knew without a hesitation that my dissertation was gonna have something to do with eight week terms in higher education, uh, specifically in addressing the inequities and equity disparities for success of uh, um, our marginalized student populations. But I couldn't for the first you know, year and a half of, of coursework and thinking and, and trying to envision this dissertation, I just couldn't quite come to a place where I was like, yes, that's the direction that I'm gonna go because the challenge in the dissertation is to pick focused because you want to change the world and you're like no I need to do a dissertation so picking a topic that's focused enough to to fit within the scale of, of your work and your research and so it was almost the, the 12th hour when I realized that this project I was working on with math faculty really had me energized and I was really excited and it would be a better direction to go for my dissertation topic than what I'd been talking about for a year and a half two years so I talked to my advisor and I said, so here's this thing. It's a 90 degree. What do you think? And she was completely supportive. She's like, if you're going to do it, you got to do it now. But she was completely supportive of that refocusing so that it, it resonated for me in the work that was going to be meaningful for such a time consuming um, project that as a dissertation is. So I would say my experience and that of my colleagues that um, I was part of their conversations with different advisors through that process uh, over and over again was oriented to the, the student themselves, to your passion, and then supporting you and helping guide you to colleagues at the university who may be valuable resources for that. So the executive director for the community college research organization that UI has, and I'm blanking on the letters on that, um, but she's fantastic and she's nationally renowned. So my advisor connected me with her to be part of my committee, um, which is the reverse of my work supporting the chairs. I shared the perception and feelings that Valerie had. Uh, I was from Brazil. I had changed careers in the middle of the program. I have entered HRD and suddenly I was not working for HRD anymore. Still, I had a wonderful advisor who helped me to make the connections with what I were doing at the moment and HRD and so what I liked so much between them. And even though he was not president, he was he didn't, it was not involved with the culture and the career that I was at the time help me to get that. So of course it was his area of study, HRD, that is human resource development. But I heard from him many, many, many times, it's your research. It's something that you need to be proud of. I'm here to help you. And it really helped me a lot. It really helped me. Uh, yes. So I guess, you know, coming at the end, I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement, you know, with my colleagues in that when my research first started, it actually I had a different topic. I had a different subject. And one of the things that my advisor said to me is that choose exactly what it is that you want to know more about. And she more put it to me, like, think of it. And she put me in this perspective. She said, if you were to go and profess tomorrow, what would you like to profess? And immediately, and I told her what it is that I want to do. She said, that's what you go do. And so when I embarked on that journey, she was just always there to support, always there to help and kind of uh, as a guidance, like teachers, are more a guidance and you know so it's no term where it's, it's up to the students to learn she just was really is that guide and really was that support and said that whatever you need uh i will be there for you but it's how what's the direction that you want to go in 
it's not what the direction that I look at, what's the direction you want to go in, and I am here to support you. So for me, it was definitely more of me deciding exactly what it is that I wanted as a focus of concentration, and from there, um, had an, a great, and I want to say my advice, but really my committee members, and because the color stepped in and said, hey, how can we support, how can, you know, we help you along, Ken, and they were just all fantastic, but they really allowed me to, you know, look at it and, and embark on it, and it was my journey, and it was my dissertation, it was my work, and it said, no, this is, you know, this belongs to you. It's actually, right now, as we're talking, I'm writing a journal publication, and I'm the first author on it. And one of my uh, committee members said, "You are the, you know, the first author. This is, you know, your project. I am here only as to assist." And I think that's what the uh, beauty, uh, Nathan, at the University of Illinois, of what uh, they do. So you, they really help you and. It, it becomes more of you, and it's not about them. It's, it's all about it's for you to mark on it. For me, that to me is is what sets the University of Illinois apart from any other school. Travis, I know you're looking to transition. I just want to make one additional point on this topic, and then um, uh, we can transition. So I totally agree with all uh, that our speakers have said. An additional point. Um, is our EDD program is very competitive. And one of the things that um, faculty look for is um, if a student comes in with an interest or a passion um, where the faculty feel that they, they can support that student in the sense they don't have the expertise, then they will not, uh, that will be a consideration in the admission process. So, um, it is to avoid a situation where you admit a student and then a faculty member is not going to try and force or reroute that person's uh, passion to suit their own. So it's like a matching process. So if a student comes in with a certain passion um, and if there's a situation where there is no faculty member with expertise in that particular area, they may lean towards not admitting the student because there's nobody to work with the student, all to show that um, they are there to support you in your passion. And if they feel they don't have the expertise, um, they will not um, offer, offer the student admission. So it is one of the criteria for admission is that there is a match. Um, so it is a matching process uh, very much so in the, in the admission process. Thank you for that additional information, adding that in there. Thank you. For, um, Brianna, our online student advisor, got another question. We're going to do this question, uh, try and do it uh, pretty quickly, and then we will move into the career portion for this evening. Uh, yes, so I received a question from, um, I hope I don't mispronounce this, and I, I'll pre-apologize, but uh, from Razak, and he said that he wants to deepen his understanding in the educational research field of helping the minorities in Singapore uh, due to the huge gap in education and SES and the application of technology into learning to help making learning easier. Um, so he's wondering if the EDD program would help to achieve these goals. So kind of uh, focusing, it sounds like, um, on assisting minorities um, and the application of technology into learning. Um, I did mention to you, Razak, that we would talk individually about this, but I would also love to hear from our panelists to see um, if they have any insight about um, you know, just their experience um, with these particular topics in their programs. Uh, real quick note in the diversity and equity program, definitely uh, in two ways. One is there's a lot of opportunities for personalized research within the context of a course. So if the course is talking about connecting with marginalized student populations in higher education, then your papers and your research within that course are able to be customized to your particular areas of interest. Um, so that it's not a, a prescriptive, it's, it's not an undergraduate class, obviously. And so even in the context of the courses, you have the ability to customize to, to focus on the country that is of priority to you and the circumstances within that that are of priority to you. And then of course, as we had talked about, there's a lot of courses from the methodology courses at the beginning to the dissertation um, and concept at the end, where it, it's all in that focus. Um, but one of the things I enjoyed is 
and know, therefore know that yes, there it is relevant and, and supportive of that work is we have a lot of students from Singapore. And so there were a number of students. So you would even very likely have classes with colleagues from Singapore itself um, to be, or if not in your class, be able to get connected with them. So you wouldn't uh, be an island in that work either. the HRD program, but so not exactly in my program, but I can say that in classes, we had a lot of students, a lot of, a lot of peers with, within this, this field and from, like Valerie said, from different parts of the globe. So I, I, I can, I think you wouldn't have a problem at all on the contrary. I think the program it's designed exactly to to have this different experience and to to support and I believe they have a huge number of classes that you can manage and pick to build what you are intended to study. But again, uh, I'm from the Human Resource Department. Maybe uh, Valerie and Kenneth and the staff can, can help you better. Okay, yeah. Uh, one of the things I would say is that I think what makes the staff and the faculty at the University of Illinois unique is that you have such a broad range of people with so much worldly knowledge and expertise. So whatever area you want to you know, indulge into, I think you will always have someone and always have that support and always have that uh, 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 way of being able to accomplish that. So it, it one of the things that um, I was actually say about my uh, committee members is that three of the four were from different countries from around the world. And their perspectives was so unique and their knowledge and understanding was so unique that it really helped shape and mold what my work and my research was about. So I think that as you are uh, looking into going into an area, that you will always have, there will always be someone there who will be able to help you and support you. And by all means, if this is the area that, again, for me, if that is truly what it is that you want to do and truly your passion, go for it. And you will have someone here that will be able to support you in the research that you will embark upon. Thank you all for answering that. And yeah, as um, also as Brianna shared, um, she shared her email address in the chat. If anybody has questions about programs, uh, about what it would be like, you can reach out to, to her via email, and then you can also reach us at gradservices at education.illinois.edu. It's another way that everybody can reach us. So with that, I'm gonna move into kind of the career portion. So we'll go back to uh, rotating questions for each of the panelists, and then we'll move into uh, Q&A from the audience. We know we have folks in a variety of different programs and prospects here joining us tonight. Um, so with that, I know each of you have already shared briefly um, a bit about what it is that you are currently doing, but could you re remind everybody what you are currently doing? And as Valerie shared in chat, yeah, let's go ahead and reverse the order to mix things up. So Ken, you can go, you can go first. Oh, you're muted. Oh, sorry about that. I said, okay. I was hit my oxygen tank because usually that was the order, so it got flipped now. Okay. All right. So I am an educational consultant. And what I do is I go to schools, I go to teachers, uh, parents, and I actually even go into corporations. And so what I do is I talk about how can we look at uh, learning and immerse it into uh, an environment that is engaging and fun. And my research is regarding in video games. So this is a lot of the work that I do. I also, I have a, a company that I just started at SUNY Out of Learning. And what we are doing is using alternative uh, support for students, especially during the COVID pandemic who have fallen behind. So we're adding support to that, which I didn't add earlier. 
I am also a video game writer and producer. I just uh, wrote my very first video game and I hopefully to put it into production uh, very soon. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Everybody keep your fingers crossing me for that. And thanks. And if you do, everybody here, I will give you a free copy of it if it gets uh, into production. And actually, uh, one of the things that my long range goes is to then start professing at a university. So just to kind of tell everybody about this, and this actually just happened today, is that I'm going to be interviewed for an associate professor position at Yale University next week. So we'll see how that goes and see what happens with that. And uh, as you see, I have a lot going on. So trying to keep my head on and things is hard, but uh, I'm, I'm, ha I'm very happy and everything. So, okay, I'm out of breath. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. I was working really with the heart of human resource development with training and I completely changed areas. I am the head of conduct supervision of the financial markets. So I had to find the links. At first, I, 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 I thought that, okay, it's completely different. But at the end, what I found is not so different. So we, in HRD and in conduct supervision, we're talking about performance, improving performance, behavior of people. And I was in HRD and we, uh, my area, my field was adult education in all of the system. We're talking with adults and we want them to have a better performance, better behavior. So I had, to find those links between my career and what I was studying. And at the end, everything that I have studied is serving my career now. I'm still working for the Brazilian government in a different position. I didn't receive a raise. I didn't receive anything because of that, but I received a huge challenge. So I have sent a uh, hundred people directly uh, linked to me and I'm responsible for the conduct uh, of a hundred and seven, se seventy hundred institutions of the entire uh, financial system. And I remember when my, my kids, when I started to make the study the program and I have changed the position and they they asked me mom why are you doing this are you going to receive a raise and I said no are you going to change are we moving to the United States and I said no at least not now I work for the Brazilian government so why are you doing that so are you studying in the middle of the night for what I was doing for me so no matter what, I, I found the links and it was the, the greater learning within the, the, the program I was doing for me. So now I have a huge challenge. I don't know tomorrow where I'm going to be. I'm happy where I am, but it helped me to understand that. Thank you so much for sharing. And so yes, um, so Ken, yes, got to keep you on your toes there, my friend. And congratulations, that's exciting. So um, I am thrilled to serve as the president for Lone Star College Sci Fair now. Um, and as I mentioned, that that wouldn't have been possible if I didn't have that key of having the doctorate um, completed. It is a position that that has that as a requirement, even for consideration. Um, and so that our college is twenty two thousand five hundred students. And so it's a very large community college. About 80% of our students are transferring to universities, uh, approximately 70% are part-time. So they're working students for the most part. And a large number of our students are first generation in college. And our community is beautifully diverse. 
um, both race, ethnicity, as well as financially. And so we have tremendous wealth disparity um, across our community. And so we seek to serve everyone on that continuum um, in a way that allows them to reach their dreams and not be uh, tracked per se into someone else's dreams for them. And so for me, um, I am tremendously passionate about community colleges ability to do what Kenneth you were talking about or I'm sorry Ken because you're not in trouble you're good so Ken was talking about um, in that individual experience with students I was thinking yes when those those students that were having lunch with you become adults we get them in community colleges um, and they they may not have seen somebody such as yourself to tell them that, that you believe in them and that they can do this and that yes they can be college and so for me, that's what, what community colleges do for our community is create that space. Um, so it is really exciting. And I will say, because this hasn't come up in the discussion, one of the things I think that's special about the EPAL program specifically is that inclusion of policy. Um, I've worked in two different states and I will tell you policy matters and being present as educators at the tables where policies are being decided. It's like Hamilton being in the room um, it matters. And so as practitioners who are passionate about equity and passionate about our students and actually know what pedagogy is, we have to also be able to be in the policy discussions. Um, and so fortunately in both my North Carolina roles as well as here, um, I've been able to be, be in that discussion as well and be part of the leadership change for states as well as my own uh, college and my own students. Thank you all for sharing a, a bit more about what it is you're currently doing and about your careers. Last question I have before we move open to Q&A from the audience would be, what advice would you give to a current student or somebody looking to move into your field? Uh, my advice would be is to make sure that you really sit down and really think about what it is that you really want to do. You really want to do, because you have to, when this this process, and again, going back to, and you guys all know by now, it's a lengthy process. And it is very important that you are doing what you are passionate about, that you are doing that you want to have, you want to be able to do something and not necessarily where it's going to make you know, a traumatic difference, but you maybe want to begin the footprints to start saying, I, I want to do something as a way of doing some beneficial to society, or what can I do to help? And you really have to be able to uh, understand that a process such as this and the process that you are going to undertake is going to mean it's going to take a lot from you and it is going to challenge you. It is going to ask you, how much do you really care about this? Because if you really don't care about your work, people are going to see through it. And then if people are going to think that you're not passionate about the, your work, then why should they be? So you really got to be able to make sure that the road that you are going to go down, that it is a road that you have thought about, and it's a road that you understand, and it's a road that you said, I am going through this. This is a part of who I am. Um, I unfortunately, I knew a couple of people that they were, they had started st studying subjects and they pretty much honestly told me, they said, I really don't care about this topic. It's just something that I can get a lot of work from. I can get a lot of papers from and I can just, you know, write my dissertation, that's it. And what ended up happening is that during their process, there were some times where they got stuck. There were some times they became agitated. There were some times where they became angry. Um, and I think that was part of the fact that you, did you follow, you know, your purpose? Did you follow your destiny? So I have three kids and I always tell them, I said that we all are born here with a purpose. Follow what your purpose is. Why are you here? Ask yourself that question. What is your main purpose? It's always uh, in front of us but sometimes it's hard to look at, but make sure that you find whatever your truth is and whatever comes from inside of you. And when it comes from inside of you and it's truly what you feel deep down in your heart, then you will not only 
be not only just be successful, but you will be at a height that, you know, it, it's almost unimaginable. Like for me, I could talk about my work each and every single day. That's how I know this is my purpose. This is how I know this is what I want to do. If this, if you can't do that, then, then find what that purpose is. And once you find that, then you are going to just sail right on through and you're going to keep going higher and higher and higher. Sure. Um, I totally agree with Ken. I, I totally agree. Someone had said in the chat, start with your why. And if you haven't read Simon Sinek, go read Simon Sinek. Um, throw Brene Brown in there just for good measure. So it, it guides both your, it should. I would encourage you to let it guide both your professional choices and your education choices. Your your choice of a master's program or your choice of a doctoral program should reinforce and support something that you are excited about doing in the world and contributing in the world and being in the world. And that can take shapes that you have no idea yet. Um, I think one of the things, and, and Raz, I saw you had that, what should people avoid? One of the things that I've seen young professionals in higher education um, stymie themselves on is perceiving a very prescribed and linear track of I'm going to do this for this time and then I'm going to promote to this and then I'm going to promote to this and then I need to be here by eight years. Um, I think that that limits people's experiences, it limits opportunities. You don't even realize the doors you've closed if you're too narrowly focused and seeing what's uh, possible for your careers. Um, I would say I love the, the collection of us as panelists because we represent how very broad this work can be um, from government to everything from, from Yale to private sector and gaming and, and traditional college, community college leadership, right? So there's so much that you can do with the education that you get. Don't let yourself get too narrowly pigeonholed. Um, and as somebody who's moved multiple states for work, I think there's a lot of value in that if it works for your life. It doesn't work for everybody's life or personalities. But if you can, if you can live and work in different places, those experiences are really invaluable to helping shape the, the leader and the professional and the expert that I think you become. Uh, as for me, don't worry if things didn't go exactly as you have planned because when we enter a program we have that idea and you may change along the process your career may change along the process what you thought you were studying may change what we're going to study may change so be flexible be gentle to yourself don't push too much don't push too hard because it's going to be hard enough you you are going to face things that we didn't have the idea in the beginning. But uh, as Ken said, you are going to be a doctor, but the way, the, the path is for each person is different. So allow yourself to change, to change if you need to, allow yourself, don't push too hard, ask for help talk to professors, everybody's in the same situation. Everybody, we are all students, doctors to live for the first time. So be gentle to yourself. It's going to uh, easy the process. It's hard enough. Thank you all for that insight. Now we'll open things up for Q&A. While um, folks are thinking of their first question, uh, if you're a current student, um, we are collecting some uh, feedback on uh, extracurricular events from current students. So if you're a current student, go ahead and uh, give us your feedback here. And then I'll have one more uh, question later about how people thought uh, tonight went. Um, but with that said, um, open for Q&A now because I understand it's uh, career related questions, feel free to direct your question to a uh, specific panelist.
So I wondered if there's anybody in the room that's contemplating something other, uh, uh, maybe a different option other than um, a doctoral program at this time. Feel free to um, speak up. I saw uh, maybe you're thinking about a master's or maybe you're thinking about one of our certificate programs. If you have some questions uh, related to that, feel free to um, pose them. Sangeeta, if I may. Uh, Juliana here. I have started as a certificate. So I entered the program during the certificate, and then I have applied for the doctoral degree. So it was my way to find, to see if it was, it's a big commitment to go to, to, to the doctoral degree, but at the same time, it's, it's, it was uh, important knowledge. So it worked so well for me. So I had the feeling how I get to know the faculty and university and what I was going into it. So when I have applied for the, the doctoral degree, I was most certain that I really wanted to that commitment. Juliana, I'm so glad you shared that um that aspect of your path. Um, and that goes to show uh, what what you guys were talking earlier that need not be a linear or one path, one entry point. Um, we do encourage our students to consider exactly what you did, Juliana, certificate. Maybe you're not, uh, you know, there's someone who's not ready to embrace an entire or embark on an entire degree program at this point. Um, maybe um, your, your life circumstances don't enable you to start on a, on a doctoral program right now. So, but a certificate is a great entry point. Or maybe you are not sure if you like the subject matter enough and you want to give it a try. Um, so that's another reason why a certificate program would uh, be a good option. Um, and, the, and the good news is that our certificates, uh, you can apply the credits that you earn from a certificate uh, to a degree program. So it, um, you know, you're not wasting um, the credits in any way. You can continue, can build on those credits. And we did get one uh, question here in the, the chat for, for everyone, for each of the panelists. Once y'all graduated, did you change careers or did you stay within the same profession? Um, and then how did you go about reaching out to uh, prospective institutions if you did a career change? Okay, um, I would say, well, for me, I stay within my same uh, path. And it's, you know, again, as I alluded to earlier and what I'm doing with uh, designing video games that with educational content, uh, but I stay within the same path. Now, for me, what, I did is that how you are getting and Miss Askins getting on the radar. So for me, start attending events at so if you have a particular school that you are looking at, try to get on their radar by attending events that they have when they having uh when you if you're able to present your work at be able to go to conferences, um, events that they may have and start attending those events, whether they be, you know, if you cannot in person, but online. Um, and then start getting involved with programs as they relate to that particular institution. I had actually attended a couple of conferences uh, over the summer that was in Spain and in Greece. And this is how I met up with a representative from Yale. And we actually, I did not know, but we actually just sat and just started talking. And uh, her and I had a commonality and video game based research. And she said, hey, you know, let's exchange emails, exchange emails, so on and so forth. And then from there, you know, it, it took on into uh, that direction. So you really have to put yourself in a place of where uh, if that particular school that you would like to attend to, uh, get on their radar by attending their conferences, go to conferences, make sure the conferences you attend are meaningful conferences, are good ones that you are gonna, so for your, who you got a target at that, 
they are going to be at that conference with some representative. And then it's the thing, it's networking and just start talking and, and going from there, presenting your work. Most important thing is then start writing papers, start putting out journal publications. Uh, get the world, make sure that the world can begin to see who you are and see what the work that you're doing. And that is how the way that you would be able to track those particular institutions that you are interested in working at. I would echo that completely. Um, being able to have those relationships and connections is huge. And it often happens accidentally, but putting yourself intentionally in the position, positions for accidents to happen makes all the difference, uh, like Ken was describing for sure. I would say that the two things that, that I think of, uh, because I was, I came into Lone Star College from the outside, but then I had the opportunity to, to take the presidency as an internal promotion, um, but a, a also a national search, so highly competitive one you are interviewing every single day. You might not yet know what the job is for which you're interviewing, but you are interviewing every single day. And so don't forget that. Don't forget that on the difficult days with the difficult colleagues, um, you're interviewing every single day. And so both for internal and external, that, that will go with you and either speak to your advantage or speak to challenges. So keeping that in mind, I find really helpful. And then the other that uh, my colleagues in business separate from education have pointed out, which I think is really important for us in education is we learn to craft our resumes or our CVs like job descriptions. My job is to do all these things. You want your resume to celebrate your outcomes, to celebrate your accomplishments, to provide metrics about the impact that that institution had positively because you were a part of it. And so that means you have to, you have to be in the mix of things and stepping into those leadership opportunities that may mean a whole lot of work for not much credit, but it creates that narrative of experience that you're then able to celebrate um, on those as well. So that when you have those intentionally structured um, accidental opportunities in relationships, you then also have that um, depth of experience and outcomes to be able to illustrate. a good example because I have changed careers during the program within the same organization. Then I worked for the same organization for 16 years, but something happened when my boss offered me the current position I am today. It was, like I said, it was not a promotion. It was not a raise. It, it was to change areas. And the challenge was much bigger, but I was kind of talking to him, okay, uh, thank you, but I'm not sure if I'm ready. And he told me, you are doing a doctoral degree at University of Illinois while you're working with two kids. You are ready for this challenge. And it was something that I was doing a doctoral in a different area of the position, but somehow it helped me to get the position where I am today. My boss saw the effort and everything. So he really considered that and to help me to, to get where I am today. Thank you all. Um, and actually we got a great uh, follow-up question to that, which I think will make for a great kind of last question for tonight. Um, if, and if anybody, uh, before we get to that, if anybody has uh, any other questions that they didn't get answered tonight, you can reach me at tgiffin at illinois.edu and I can help connect you with the panelists um, also for, for that question. Um, so kind of a follow-up question to that uh, while I start the poll, this last poll question here um, was, are there any uh, professional organizations that each of you would, would, would recommend folks uh, maybe joining uh, in each of your fields? Uh, yes, you know, actually, um, I highly recommend, you know, professional organizations because this, for me, it is about the networking and networking is so critical and so very important. So whatever your focus or your research and your concentration is in, then look for those particular, you know, organizations that to, you know, join. 
Um, I was a little slow in the process, so I didn't quite join as early as I should have been. But um, when I did, it really began to open up a lot of doors and I really began to then meet and network with uh, a lot of individuals. So I would 1000% say definitely you really want to uh, look at organizations that kind of have some commonality in what your particular field of research will be doing and then align with those organizations and you know go to those events again uh when they have if you can get to especially now things open in person do that virtual but make sure you do that and that will help you uh in my viewpoint tremendously I added a few for community colleges in the uh, chat, if those are helpful for folks. Those are all oriented toward equity work in community colleges and really um, supporting community colleges, realizing the dream uh, for democratizing higher education that, that was in the origins of community colleges. We're still working on it, but we're getting closer. Uh, but I would also say that look for cross-industry opportunities as well. Uh, so for example, Educause is a technology in education uh, conference group, but technology is integrating with learning in so many ways at much more uh, integrated fabric than ever before. And so having some of that cross-industry exposure, as well as looking at, uh, much like Juliana has been talking about HR, looking at the training and professional development aspects in the business sector to counterbalance your experience within education or higher education so that you're, you're looking uh, at things from fresh perspectives in addition to the, the very intensive lens through which the, our kind of home organizations give us. I'm from Brazil, so thanks. Uh, organizations here a bit different, but I agree with Valerie and with uh, Ken. I think I just posted advisors. If you have doubts, advisors and some colleagues can help you uh, with the process, but definitely it's something that getting engaged, it may help you. Thank you all for answering that question and all the other questions um, that you answered throughout the evening. And thank everybody. Thank you all for joining us this evening. With that, we are at time uh, for this evening. Um, as I'd mentioned before, if you have questions, you can reach us at uh, grad services, grad services at education. Yes, sorry. Grad services at education.illinois.edu. Was getting a tongue twister on myself now and uh, wanted to make sure that I had that right for everybody. Um, you can So you can reach us there if there are any questions that you didn't have answered. Um, you can also reach out to us if you'd like to connect with any of the panelists um, afterwards. Thank you all. Thank the panelists for coming uh, out this evening. It was good to connect with you all. And we hope to be in touch and see you at other events in the future. Have a great day, everyone.